They sound so good, they almost make me angry. A couple years ago, I shot a review on the KZ-8 earbuds and how impressed I was with the performance for 15 bucks. Recently answering some questions on Patreon, people asking about low-cost headphone options, I thought it would be worth revisiting the KZ brand, moving up the price tier to a whopping $20. Spending a couple days with the KZ ES4 in my ears, do you get what you pay for? Are they worth it for the monies? Yeah, they're they're pretty great. One of the ways that we save on costs here, definitely a fair complaint against the ES4. The packaging is kinda basic. You get a box with some earbuds inside. And that's about it. Pretty much every penny of this purchase is gonna go into the hardware that you're going to stick inside your skull. These are the cheapest dual driver earbuds I've ever reviewed. Okay, dual driver? Each earbud casing has two devices responsible for creating the frequencies of sound that your ears hear. The supposed advantage over a single driver earbud, you can divide high frequency and low frequency duties as opposed to doing everything on one driver. Kind of like speaker tech, the difference between tweeters and woofers, but I digress. The claim, the ES4 should better represent the full frequency of your music and particular attention has been paid to the mid range which should make me really happy. And it does. Can you tell I'm really not trying to tease these dumb YouTube clickbaity questions in the middle of my videos? There's a wonderful representation of the mid-range, especially in those hallmark sections of my favorite songs. Listening for vocals and instruments. Distortion on a guitar has a satisfyingly sharp buzz. Jazz instrumentation is clear and distinct, all without sacrificing solid bass on electronica and hip hop. Highs are bright, they are there, but in focusing on the mids, there does feel like a bit of a roll off on the high end instead of hyping a smiley face EQ like a number of products in this price tier. Now this helps on several of my favorite songs, preventing cymbals or singer sibilants from becoming harsh or brittle but they don't quite always land some of the air or crystal that I'd like to hear on a few of my favorite tracks. Against the lower cost KZ-8, this is a much better representation of that mid-range, but the cheaper earbuds land darker and bassier, so they still might be a better option for some folks depending on what music you like. The ES4 though punch way above the price tag compared against some of my previous favorite earbuds. Cycling back to Samsung's earbuds, that AKG label branding exercise that come with Galaxy phones, the ES4 have more depth and a noticeably wider soundstage. The Galaxy Buds slap all the instruments right in front of your face. The KZ broaden that sound out. Ditto some of my other favorites, like my old V-Moda, which have juicier bass than the ES4, but at the expense of a more nuanced frequency response. This is incredible audio reproduction for the price. I was admittedly a bit frustrated reading back some, uh, some of the comments on my KZ-8 review, people calling them garbage, but then comparing them to headphones or earbuds which cost two to three times as much or more. With the ES4, I absolutely can find headphones I like better. That's not hard but I would be hard pressed, however, to find something in this price tier which objectively outperforms the ES4. The ES4 come in versions with or without a microphone. It kind of just depends on what you're most likely going to use them with. If you're gonna listen on a phone predominantly, get the version with the microphone so you can take some phone calls. If you're going to use them as actual monitors, like you're gonna hook them up to recording equipment, you should probably stick with just the normal stereo pin pair, not going with the, the microphone built into the cabling. I find I get better compatibility that way. And that brings me to the design and build quality. The earbuds are pretty standard shaped in-ear monitor designs. I find this kind of casing to be really comfortable, but if you're looking for smaller or more discreet buds, maybe something sportier, you'll wanna shop elsewhere. They fit right in with my Nobles, for example, filling most of the space around my ear cavity. The fit in tens, you'll run the cable over the top of your ear. Now, on the KZ-8, we got these little weights to help keep the cables in place. But on the ES-4, like my Nobles, there's a harder plastic memory hook, which flows into a more durable braided cable, which feels much more robust, like my Nobles. This is huge, a major failure point on cheaper earbuds. Once the shielding starts to flake off or fail, or the connection to the driver degrades, or the boot crimps the cabling inside, your cheaper earbuds are now e-waste no longer. The hardware that goes inside your ears will likely outlast the cable, and now as that ages, you can replace it to get more mileage out of your initial purchase. I've replaced the cable on my Nobles 
twice since I've gotten them. That was a big deal on a premium expensive pair of in-ear monitors. That's crazy awesome on a budget offering like the ES4. Just a little thought exercise, let's say you love the fit of your current earbuds but really wish they were wireless. You can do that when you have a detachable cable. The reviews on this Bluetooth converter cable that goes behind your neck for the ES4 are not great, but one would hope this might be a trend we could build on. Let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the KZ ES4? They're nice. They're really stinking nice. This is a level of audio performance that should put headphone makers on notice. While phone manufacturers are still supplying absolutely terrible earpod style earbuds with phones, We've got KZ delivering audio quality that can handily rival some of the earbuds I've enjoyed at prices four to five times higher. I've been asking this a lot on my channel lately. How much do you like your ears? Because apparently, you don't need to spend a lot to pamper your ears a little. As always, thanks so much for watching. Would you like to know which smartphones power the ES4 the best? Will USB-C headphone dongles really get the job done for listening on nicer earbuds? For answers to those questions and more, please consider checking out the community at patreon.com slash some gadget guy, home to all of my future camera and audio deep dive reviews. It's a growing group of fun like-minded tech geeks and you'll be directly supporting production on this channel since we all know YouTube monetization ain't getting that job done. Again, patreon.com slash some gadget guy, and you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, and I will catch you on the next review.